Yep. All right, so we got this all be- all beveled and everything. Uh, we got it carved. We got it beveled. It's ready for backgrounding. That's usually my next step when I'm doing any kind of floral pattern. I'll carve it, obviously, and then go through and do all of my undercuts. Um, any anything that's kind of concave like that, I'll do my undercuts first. Then I'll come in with my crowners if I'm going to crown anything. My crowners don't work really good on these flowers, so I ended up beveling them with my small beveler. Uh, it takes a little more time, but I get a little cleaner petal on these. These flowers just don't seem to work very well with my, my crowners. The, each scallop's just a little bit too deep, and so it's just quicker for me to do it that way. After the beveling is done, then we'll come in with our with our bar grounder. Now, I'm using a Berry King 45 um, bar grounders. I've got a, I've got three of them. There's a three, a five, and then this one is a seven. So a three, a five, and a seven um, on the bar grounders. Now, I'll usually start with the the five, which is the middle one. I very seldom use this really long one. Um, to me, it's just a little long, and I don't get a consistent impression with it. So I try not to create backgrounds that are very big anyway. But if I do, um, I, I will use it. But um, I try not to do that just because I don't really like the way that one stamps. So the five and the three are the two main ones that I use. So obviously I'm gonna work my way from the biggest down. Um, most of my tools, I'll do that. I'll start with the biggest beveler, the biggest crowner. You know, I kind of work work my way down to the smallest um, deal and try to catch everything with the biggest tool I have. So as we talked about in the beveling video, you should be be able to recognize your backgrounds. So by this point, if you're doing that, you should be able to kind of put a dot everywhere your background is. Now, obviously, you know where your backgrounds are if you follow our rule of background on beveling. So you know that those are all the pushed in portions um, within the pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to start our bar grounding in those. What I like to do is if like this section here, it's not quite wide enough for that beveler or that bar grounder to fit in there like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda angle it a little bit and so that way it'll fit. If I go completely perpendicular across there, it doesn't fit very well. But if I angle it just a little bit, then I can fan and straighten out as I go in. So as you can see there, I'm kinda going at an angle. So we'll, we'll just tap and move. These are one hit tools. You're not supposed to really walk them a whole lot and you're supposed to stamp them as as least as possible so that you don't get a hamburger effect of your background. And so I would rather see just a little bit of separation in my background. I'd rather not see that at all, but I would rather see that than to go in there and try to stamp another couple in between these two to try to get that cleaned up. So um, you don't want to go through there and just and just run it around in there like you would like you would a matter because a matting tool uh, that's what it's designed to do is to just mat that background down. A bar grounder, you're actually just trying to leave a smooth, consistent, clean background. And as you can see on that last little hit, I tapped it, but I really only worked off the, the back end of it. I tried not to stamp too much on the front end because I already had background pieces there. So like here, we can start here up inside. We can start right here inside the, the crevice of that, of that scallop. And then as we come out, we can kind of rotate that tool to where it's then perpendicular to this pedal. And that's just because that's the widest point across that background. That's all we're after. So just kind of getting getting there so what I'm saying is so if we can come into the scallop here rotate then we can come out and meet up in there so I'll show you how that works see that so now that's nice and even and it's not so now that's nice and even and we don't have a lot of over tap so now we can come here and just fill that in so same thing right here I'm gonna find out what's the, the biggest area across there and we can kind of fan this thing here this way background is kind of like a puzzle you're trying to figure out what is the easiest way and the way I can get through this with the least amount of taps so as you can see I'm angling as I come in there 
and that'll leave it smoother. And you can start in, you can start in the crevice if you want, in that little, that little point down in there. You can start there and fan out, or you can start here and fan into it. But it's too wide across this. This bar grinder is too wide here, and a lot of guys will go ahead and grab this smaller one. They'll grab the number three. And that way they can come across where well, you can you have to hit it a few more times than you would if you'd have just used the big one, um, the number five, and then fanning it. And it is, it's okay to fan these. It's just you've got to be careful not to overdo it. So like right in these little spots here, I'll usually fan them. I'll start down there. Kind of get that effect to where it kind of fans open out of there. Now, when we get to a big scroll like this, that's the point where I'll usually start down in the point of the scroll and do something like that. And then I'll, if I've got room, I'll fan that in there. Now I can pick up where I was and just fill that space in and that'll keep it, keep it clean. It's, it's kind of like golf, and I, I know nothing about golf. I don't play golf at all, but I do know that getting the maximum amount of points out of the group is not the goal, or a maximum amount of strokes. I know that, you know, you're, you're not supposed to hit it. The least amount of times you can hit it, the better your score is going to be. So it's kind of the same way with, with backgrounding or with bar grounding. Just like in golf, when you're bar grounding, the fewer times you hit it, the better it's going to look. So just like in golf, the fewer times you hit that ball, the better your score is going to be. So you want to go ahead and when you're approaching a little section of, of background, you want to look kind of approach it in the, in the sense of how many, what direction can I go and how can I position this tool so that I can hit it the least amount of times and cover the most amount of space. And that's why I will almost always use the number five first because I want to see if I can make that five bar grinder fit in all of the background pieces to where I don't have to switch and grab another tool. And that's just an efficiency step. If I can keep from having to grab another tool, it makes my tooling go a little bit faster. And so as you can see in this piece here, we've now gotten every piece of background with that number five. Even this little bitty one that was down here was able to kind of just fit one of them in there and cover that. And so that's how that's how I take care of my background. Like I said, it's just a it's it's pretty simple, but it's just you have to you have to kind of keep your mind as far as when you're using one of these, I wanna just I wanna only hit it so many times. I don't want to have to you never want to go in there and do something like this where you just because if you do if you're doing that you might as well be using a, a matter because if you do that you end up with that hamburger effect right there versus a really nice even separation between your dots so you can see how much better the one on the left looks than the one on the right so that's the deal guys just try to keep your keep your impressions to the least amount as you can Try to use the biggest bar grinder that you can fit in that particular spot um, and just try to keep it as clean as possible. Try to try to think of creative ways that you can start in there and fan around. You know, some guys will come in here and do that and fan it around. And then you but for me, you end up with a little bitty piece in there that you've got to hit with a number three or whatever. And everybody does it different and everybody has a different threshold for the amount of hamburger so to speak that they want to keep within that background um i'm not too crazy about trying to keep it just perfect some guys want all of them to face the same way throughout the entire pattern i don't really care i just want it covered and i want them you know as smooth and as crisp and clean as possible so i hope that helped just check it out uh play with it you know bigger background patterns are going to have a little bit more of a challenge than the smaller background patterns but it's just your your personal preference on on what you want to see but just give it a shot if you got any questions let me know